Welcome to Nevada News Makes on the program today, part two of my historic interview with both Nevada senators together, Reed and Heller, on all new Nevada Newsmakers. Nevada Newsmakers coverage of the United States Senate with Majority Leader Harry Reid and U.S. Senator Dean Heller is brought to you by Pro Group Management, the Nevada Trucking Association, and NV Energy. Your business deserves the absolute best in workers' compensation. You should know that not all workers' comp is equal. With Pro Group Management, your business is all that matters. What do you receive for your premium dollar? Professional risk management team, top-rated claim service, customer care team, website access to your full account? It's all in the numbers. You can upgrade your dollars and make them stretch farther and more efficiently. Call us today. You deserve the best. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Press on, Southern Nevada. It's a new beginning. Information the way you need it. We are fighting for you every day to make your life better. The facts. So you can succeed. So you can plan. So you can dream. And always remember, press on. What does the massive Tajarino Industrial Center offer to Northern Nevada? Well, there's an incredible amount of oversized infrastructure in place, along with hundreds of sites to accommodate relocating or expanding businesses. The park includes IT ecosystems, call centers, data centers, e-commerce distribution, and there's defense system manufacturing, clean energy, there's renewables, and recycling. And we're just getting started. The Tajarino Industrial Center, building economic prosperity for Nevadans. Nearly 200,000 Nevadans work in retail businesses, supporting families and the community. Nevada's retail businesses generated over $2 billion in sales tax revenue in one year, including nearly $700 million to help our schools. Shop around and see all that Nevada's retailers offer our state. We're the Retail Association of Nevada, representing thousands of Nevada businesses. Businesses that work for Nevada. Closed captioning of Nevada Newsmakers is brought to you by the Nevada Trucking Association. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're pleased to have the second program of the historic nature here with the United States Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid and U.S. Senator Dean Heller. Um, so let's start out with a remarkable quote from George Will when talking about the border situation with these kids coming from Central America and South America. And he said, my view is that we have to say to these children, welcome to America. You're going to go to school and get a job and become Americans. We have 3,141 counties in this country. That would be 20 per county. The idea that we can't assimilate these eight-year-old criminals with their teddy bears is preposterous. Your thoughts on that, Dean? First of all, they're not criminals. I don't believe that these eight well, he was, he was, well, he was being facetious. I understand that. I understand that. But uh, this is America. And, and I have said we need to take care of these children that are coming across the border. I do believe. I do believe that they should safely uh, be returned back to their parents uh, of their country of origin. That being the case, let's take care of these children while they are here. But let's are make sure any diseases or any problems or issues that they may have, this is America, we can take care of it, and it's a responsibility that we have. Are you not concerned, though, in sending these children back that they would be in these terrible circumstances with the drug cartels, um, the sex trafficking, like I said, and all safely, the rest of it? Safely. If there are, uh, are uh, situations or, or circumstances by which that can't be done, uh, we'll assess that at the time. Senator Reed. This is one of the areas where Senator Hill and I have agreed, that is, comprehensive immigration reform. Absolutely. We passed a bill in the Senate more than a year ago. It was bipartisan. It's gone to the House, to the graveyard of legislation, and nothing's happened, which is not right. Had that legislation passed, we wouldn't be having this problem we're having today. But we are. I, here's how I feel about it. Well, hang on. How, why, why would it, that, that have changed things? Um, because these, these kids well, for, appear to be for, refugees. For a couple of reasons. Not number, one, number one, number one is the whole processing would be different. There would be more resources. One of the problems we're having with these kids and with everything else is we're under-resourced. 
and the Border Patrol folks are overwhelmed with people. Now these people coming across are not sneaking across the border. They're saying, here I am, take me. So here's how I feel about this. Um, I believe we should have the resources to make sure that we take a look at these kids, to find out if any of them are, um, and there will be some of them, that should be treated as refugees. That is, they are coming from situations where one or both their parents have been murdered, where the, one of their uh, siblings has been uh, taken into human trafficking. And, but we need people to look at this. Those children who are in that situation should be able to stay here. Those that aren't, send them home. Um, as far as the immigration bill is concerned, um, they're not even going to take that up. Um, so so well, the Sam, president has threatened to accept. I don't know. Uh, you know, I have a, really a good relationship with John Boehner. We disagree on lots of stuff, but he's a man that I have appreciated working with. Some of the difficult things that we have been able to get done during the uh, years that I've talked about the last two Congresses has been um, things that he and I and our staffs have worked on together. We don't make a big press release on it, but that's how we get things done. And I believe that he believes that we should do comprehensive immigration reform. I, I really do believe that's how he feels. So why isn't he bringing it up for a vote? Well, be, because he's got these crazies in his caucus, he can't do it because they don't want to do it. So um, I would hope that after the elections, lame duck session, and we can pass something. It would pass the House like that. All he has to do is allow a vote. So I hope hope that will happen. So you believe that that could happen, could happen in the lame duck session? I do believe that, yes. Your thoughts? I don't necessarily disagree. If you were to bring that immigration reform uh, bill to the House floor, I believe that uh, I, I do believe it would pass. I don't think the issue uh, on immigration reform is, is certainly a, a problem that we have here in Nevada. I think our congressional delegation as a whole, I don't speak for every one of them, but I think as a whole you'd see a majority of us, if not all of us, uh, supporting some form of uh, comprehensive immigration reform. It was a good piece of legislation. I think most Americans, most Nevadans aren't happy with the current system that we do have. We have an opportunity to fix it. Had we fixed it, as Senator Reid said, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. Um, and, and, it's and are a you strong, in full of support of the Senate version of the bill? Uh, I, I voted for it. So, okay. Uh, so, so you wouldn't be looking for any changes to come from the House? It's going to be interesting to see where the House does come out. If they're going to piecemeal it, uh, I hope they don't. Uh, they want to it will never first. pass if they piecemeal it. They want a border first uh, portion to it. Uh, um, I'll leave that to Senator Reid and uh, Speaker Boehner to uh, to uh, iron out the differences there. But uh, I certainly want to see something passed. You know, and that brings up a question, which is, how much money do you spend to secure the border before it makes no sense? Well, there's a piece on public radio today. We talked about how worthless defense was. How there, it's a joke. It doesn't stop any. Well, I'm sure it stops a few. You know, you're 70 years old. You can't climb that fence because the ladders are too tall for you. But, uh, so I think we, we've spent the money there, and if we have to spend more money, then we'll do it. But it really becomes, uh, you know, and right now we have 700 miles of fence, we have drones, helicopters, we've increased the size of the Border Patrol by almost 250%. Uh, we have now Governor Perry who's put National Guard on the, on the Texas side of the border. But they're only there to help. They're actually not, they're, they're helping facilitate things. They're not stopping anybody coming over. I don't know what they're doing, but they're there. You, you want to take the last 10 seconds on that? Uh, uh, on uh, Governor Perry? <laughs> I, I think uh, the governor is doing what he has to do for, for his state. Uh, just or, as or much his, as I... For his potential presidential campaign. Well, I, I don't know about that. I, I'm not talking 16 today. <laughs> okay, let's take a break. <laughs> we'll come back with our senators after this timeout. To contact Nevada Newsmakers, call 775-857-2244 or go to nevadanewsmakers.com. How do you shed some light on a better economy? Start with growth inspired by Valley Electric Association. We're a member-owned power company that puts Nevada first, and we're doing big things, like providing prosperity by securing renewable energy projects. For Nevada, that means more jobs and more opportunities, all for a strong statewide economy. In other words, together, we're doing powerful things. Visit us at vea.coop to learn more. Over the years, I've done a lot of research and worked with a lot of water districts, but one has always been at the forefront of water quality research, the Southern Nevada Water Authority. In fact, 
They became a world leader in water quality testing. Even the Environmental Protection Agency is using their work. That's why Las Vegas water continues to meet or even surpass federal standards. Coffee, Mr. Renner? No, thanks. I'll stick with water. All right. For information about water quality and home treatment systems, ask the authority. Just about everything in our lives is happening faster. But instead of just keeping up, Envy Energy plans ahead so that Nevada families have the energy they need now and well into the future. Your business deserves the absolute best in workers' compensation. You should know that not all workers' comp is equal. With Pro Group Management, your business is all that matters. What do you receive for your premium dollar? Professional risk management team, top-rated claim service, customer care team, website access to your full account? It's all in the numbers. You can upgrade your dollars and make them stretch farther and more efficiently. Call us today. You deserve the best. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Closed captioning of Nevada Newsmakers is brought to you by the Nevada Trucking Association. Trucking moves America forward. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with U.S. Senator Harry Reid and U.S. Senator Dean Heller. Um, just one more thing on uh, the immigration uh, situation. Uh, the president um, has alluded to the fact that he's going to take some kind of executive action um, during this congressional recess. Can you share with us what that might be? No, I don't know what it might be. Yeah. Ask him. <laughs> okay, but I mean, do you have any thoughts on what the president could do? He has his team of lawyers, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, the attorney general looking at this. He doesn't need my advice. Senator. I hope he doesn't. Uh, I, I think what we did in the Senate, uh, in a bipartisan fashion, um, if he's going to make laws um, or uh, uh, new regulations that uh, defy uh, some of the laws that we have in the books, I think it's always better to go through the congressional process of lawmaking um, as opposed to any executive action that uh, it, uh, under this circumstances and on this issue. Do you Sam, agree with that? At the present State of the Union address, he said we can't have another year like we had last year where there's no action by the congressional branch of government. And if that continues, I'm going to do things administratively. And he's done a lot of stuff administratively because legislation is simply not passed. He has, the, he has the administrative power within the confines of the Constitution to do those things. I agree with Dean. I think, I think a legislative fix is much better than an administrative fix. But how long do you wait for Congress to take some action? How long do you wait? Clearly there's frustration. I understand mm -hmm. the frustration. Uh, but we have to be very, very careful as we move uh, this debate forward. And clearly both of us would like to see more get done um, at the legislative level. Uh, and I think that's key. And I think the American people would like to see it done that way also. I'm not uh, criticizing the administration. I know that uh, if you take a look at their executive actions based on previous uh, administrations, uh, it's not that overwhelming. Um, but perhaps it's the substance of what they're going after, and that's why I think it's very, very important that this go through the legislative process as opposed to be done at, um, at the executive level. Sam, also I want to say this. Um, I, of course, have been disappointed in the Republican caucus. <clears throat> there are many senators there who are afraid uh, that the party's going to run against them or say bad things about them. Dean Heller doesn't fit in that mold. He's been willing to break away, which I think is a tremendous asset for the state of Nevada on many, many issues. You're saying that despite I'm, the fact he ran to the right of Sharon Angle, uh, I, I his congressional. This is where I get thrown under the bus. Unemployment compensation, <laughs> uh, land bills that we've struggled on, uh, travel promotion, these many things that he has not been able to get the support of. Um, the leadership in the Senate, he's broken away. That's, that's, I hope some people say nice things about me to that regard sometime. Okay, I, I, I want to talk about unemployment benefits. Okay. Because and I know that you both fought very hard uh, to get these reinstated. But at this point in time, hasn't enough time passed that the people who would have been getting those unemployment benefits have moved on with their lives? And, and as other Americans look at this and say, well, you know, we lost our jobs, we had to get other jobs, we had to move. Um, shouldn't this Sam, now of course, time has not helped. There's no question about that. But remember, with that 
crash that we had, many of the people who lost their jobs were in their middle 50s. Now they're 60 years old, 50, 55 years old. They can't find work because they are not trained to do a lot of the work that, that they should be doing. So there are people who have been long-term unemployed, and I think that maybe we need to set more restrictions on it. We've already put some, but I don't think we can walk away from these people who have been long, long-term unemployed. And again, I don't mean to, to be a cheerleader for Heller here, but he's <laughs> broken away from the pack on this. He and Jack Reed from Rhode Island, a Democrat, have been the leaders on this, saying he's long-term unemployed, we can't forget it. But, but maybe there's another route. Maybe it's not unemployment insurance, but perhaps, you know, retirement benefits. I mean, if they're old enough that they can't be trained into any other job, uh, it just seems that so much time has gone by that... that what people, do you mean retirement benefits? Well, well, to move them into a different program is what, what I'm suggesting. Got, the, got, the unemployment is not the way... Job training programs that are uh, spilling over, and we're trying to consolidate those. Uh, so I uh, think that's a very good idea. Sam, we're not well, no, no, I, I, we're not you know, and I wasn't being specific about it. I, I'm just saying that, 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 that to somebody who, you know, has struggled through the, the financial crisis of this country and went through unemployment, lost their homes or whatever, to see other people that are, it just seems to be going on and on, uh, for them to get unemployment benefits and all the way back to, you know, to be reinstated just seems unfair to the rest of the population. Sam, do a survey. Do a survey here in the state of Nevada and ask the average Nevadan if they believe that we're out of this recession at this point or whether or not this economy is improving. I will tell you right now, um, based on uh, the data that I have, that 60 to 70 percent of Nevadans today will tell you that this economy is not improving. But that's because we're you, trying you know what? to help excuse, those. Excuse me, Senator. Let me just say this. I, I think that that's because the media is, is like economists, way behind the curve. There are about $12 billion worth of projects that are moving forward in Southern Nevada at this very point in time. The economy in Northern Nevada, there's no um, uh, 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 space left. If, if you want to put up um, any, any kind of industrial project, there's no space left. You have to build something new. The housing is coming back. There's an 8,500 housing talk to project. AGC, Northern and Southern Nevada. Talk to them. And they will tell you how many of their... Uh, individuals are still unemployed at this point, that they perhaps have 50 percent, 50 percent of the workforce that they had five years ago. They want to improve that. I want to improve that. Senator Reid wants to improve that. And we need to help those that are looking for work. That's what unemployment benefit does. It helps those that are trying to help themselves and they shouldn't have to lose their homes simply because they lost their jobs in very, very tough times. Sam, thank you, because you said something that need, needed to be said. Um, private sector employment around the country and in Nevada is pretty good. Uh, you know, there's been, uh, the last 23 months, private sector employment has been really good. But we've had no public sector employment. It's the first time in the history of the country that following a recession, we aren't spending money to do the things that we've talked about on this program, infrastructure. Uh, it's amazing. For every billion dollars we spend, we create 50,000 high paying jobs. If we spend just a few dollars, and this money doesn't go to the BLM that they send their trucks out and start doing their work. It goes to the private sector. It goes to granite construction. It goes to Las Vegas paving. And that's the way it should be. We have to get back where the federal government recognizes the responsibilities and start spending some money so that the job picture is more than just the private sector. You're right. Las Vegas, Ken King, we're going to dedicate that sometime late in September. That's a $4 billion project. We have things going on at the James city Packer. center. Uh, we, we have a lot of stuff going on, but it's all private sector. All right, let's take a break. We've got one more segment with our two senators on this historic program. We'll be right back. Press on, Southern Nevada. It's a new beginning. Information the way you need it. We are fighting for you every day to make your life better. The facts. So you can succeed. So you can plan. So you can dream. And always remember, press on. Hi, I'm Brian Samudio with News 4. And I'm Eric Laxon from Mercedes-Benz of Reno. The 51st annual Reno Air Races are coming September 10th to the 14th, presented by Brightland. Locally owned and operated, Mercedes-Benz of Reno is once again proud to sponsor News 4's coverage of this year's air races. Five days of racing action, including the wildly popular Patriots Jet Team. Catch the excitement at the air races and stop by Mercedes-Benz of Reno for our best opportunities of the year. Race on.
make you hungry, come enjoy our $5.99 breakfast, lunch, or dinner special value menu. Cheddar Jack Cheese Omelet, Burger and Fries, Super Sloppy Joe and Fries, plus much more. Eat at Joe's, corner of South Virginia and Neal. If you've been in a crash, you need a lawyer you can trust. Someone who knows the law and who can fight for the best possible settlement. Go lightly in Vanna. 222-3333. There are lots of reasons to contact the Nevada Division of Insurance. Navigating the claims process after a car wreck. Complications with your health insurance. Even questions about bail bonds. Talk to us. We're here to help. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers with our Senators Reed and Heller. Um, let's talk marijuana. Watching Colorado and Washington State, are we going to see federal changes uh, to the marijuana laws heading toward legalization, do you believe? You might want to ask the majority leader that question. Um, but needless to say, obviously, we're seeing differences in Washington and Colorado, the impact. I believe uh, we had a ballot question a few years ago on medical marijuana, um, and I understand the use of that. Um, so I'll continue to move in the direction that the uh, the American people and what Nevadas want to go on this. Uh, I don't believe that uh, taking uh, uh, small amounts of marijuana, just making it legal, legal for public use, is probably in the best interest of the state of Nevada. But medical marijuana, uh, voters have had their say on that, and uh, I will uh, I, I will move in that direction. But uh, where we go federally, um, uh, uh, I defer to the majority leader on that. Senator Reed? When government goes into programs for money, it usually doesn't work out well. Look what's happened around the country with the spread of gaming. Nevada's doing okay. Northern Nevada's been hammered because of Indian gaming. Southern Nevada's doing just fine. But around the country, you see Atlantic City, casinos, multi, hundred million, billion dollar casinos going broke. And that the governments have gone into this because of money. And it all the social costs far outweigh any economic benefit. And that most people gamble, people can't, can't afford to gamble. The same as I look at this marijuana situation. Of course, medical marijuana is something that we should be involved in because it seems pretty clear at this stage that it helps yeah. uh, certain conditions. But the government has gone into this in Nevada and around the country for purposes of money, and that's not going to work. The state of Colorado. Their, the money they expect to make, they, they expect they'll get about a third of what they, as I understand it, what they thought they would get. So, uh, I'm for medical marijuana, I, I think that's good. But as far as uh, the government going into this for the right reason, I don't think it was the right reason. Um, are you surprised at the number of prominent Nevadans, business people, who have applied for marijuana licenses in the state? Yeah, they're, they're entrepreneurs. They think they can make a buck. That's what our system's all about. I'm not surprised. That's that's what the people that I've seen are people who are very successful business people. So they think yeah. they can do it fine. They, yeah, I think they're going to be disappointed. That's what I'm saying. Well, there's probably no one that reads the tea leaves better than you. And do you not see in this country? I mean, even in Nevada, they're talking about the likelihood that 2016 that uh, marijuana for all will be available. I don't know anything about that. I'm not part of that deal. Okay, but, and but, certainly hoping it's not true. Okay. Um, I have to ask you about Erin Bray's campaign. Um, it just seems to be a complete disaster. She's on her third campaign manager. She's not able to raise money. Uh, even the DCCC is not supporting her. What went wrong with that campaign? Well, I'm not sure the DCCC is not supporting her. Well, not financially. Well, no, that's at, not true. At this point. No, no, that's not true. She's not on the list, the first list that came yeah. out. Anyway, here's, here's how I feel about this. I'm a big fan of the Bill Bray's, her dad and I. Went to law school together. We worked together in Washington. So we've been family friends. Uh, I don't know what's happening in the campaign. I've tried to keep an eye on it. Uh, but I, I do know this. Um, I hope that she wins because I think that Congressman Hent has been an unmitigated disaster for the state. Uh, can I, uh, can I jump Please into jump this in. one? I, I think the quality of candidates is probably what's making a difference, and I think Congressman Heck has done an incredible job for the state of Nevada. We can disagree. Say. We can disagree on this, but uh, doing done very well. Uh, in fact, the last piece of legislation, standalone piece of legislation for the state of Nevada signed by uh, President Obama in the last six years was a piece of legislation that Joe Heck uh, authored. So I'm real pleased with the work he's doing. I think that's the difference in that campaign. Okay, you give me both can, can I ask one quick question? Specific things that he's done. Sure, I know. I'm not going to do that. But yeah. we'll be talking in Washington in just a few weeks, so right. we can we can get into that then. Um, are we going to get a Yarrington Lands bill out of the Senate? I sure hope so. It's, if we don't get it, it's not our fault, because we believe it's something that's important. Uh, 
we ran into a real problem in the House. We had a congressman from Utah by the name of Bishop, who's uh, want to do some things to the state that we would never, ever agree to, dealing with the Southern Nevada Lands Act. Okay, but are you optimistic? I've been, I've been optimistic for more than a year. I, every time I talk to George Dean, I'm embarrassed because we haven't gotten it done. <laughs> All right, and that's where we've got to leave it. Gentlemen, right. thank you so much. Sam, thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to have you on the program. We'll see you in D.C. Mm -hmm. right, we'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers after this timeout. There is a lot at stake when you've been seriously injured. But what happens next is critical. That's why you need expert legal representation. Let us help you get back on track and fight for the compensation you deserve. Galloway and Jensen, we fight for you. One school was too crowded. Nobody even asked her name. Another school made her feel all alone. No one was there to help. But then she found a school that was just right. And that's when the mom found the career she loved. And I love you. Dollar Loan Center has got you covered. Get a signature loan up to $2,500 in minutes. No checking account required. No application fees. No prepayment penalties. And now your trusted name and short-term lending is funding title loans. From Sioux Falls, South Dakota to Los Angeles, California, apply at one of 80 locations. Or complete your entire loan online at don'tbebroke.com. mouth does a lot of things for you every single day. So make sure you take absolute care of it. At Absolute Dental, our friendly staff will give your smile the absolute care it deserves. Like free teeth whitenings, $1,500 off braces, all your wisdom teeth removed for just $1,299, and lots more. And it doesn't matter if you have insurance or not. We're here to work out a way to make it affordable. Give your mouth the absolute care it deserves. Give us a call or visit AbsoluteDental.com. There is a lot at stake when you've been seriously injured. But what happens next is critical. That's why you need expert legal representation. We've worked for the insurance companies, and we will fight for every dollar you deserve. Galloway and Jensen, we fight for you. Our next broadcast, Supreme Court Justice James Hardesty will see on the next broadcast.